All right, what's up, you guys? On uh, UFC 260, we got Mark Andre Burial versus Abu Azaitar. And I don't know that much about either of these fighters, but I'm just going to base my decision on the fact that uh, the Azaitars are allowed to take steroids. And um, I just think the UFC kind of wants this guy to win. And uh, I saw that Mark's record isn't that impressive as of late. And I think he's lost three in a row or two, uh, two out of three recently. So I'm just going to go with Abu with a hunch on that one. And in the next fight, we got uh, Shane Young versus Omar Morales. And uh, I remember both of these guys fighting. And uh, Shane Young's little intro part last time was pretty ridiculous and definitely didn't help him out. But uh, he's got good output. And he could win a decision based on his volume, I think, and uh, alone. But I think Omar Morales has the power here and possibly the takedown uh, advantage. And I think the UFC does like Omar a little bit better. He's got a better record, and I think he's just going to be the bigger, more imposing guy in there. And so I'm going to take Omar Morales on this one. In the next fight, we got a women's uh, flyweight fight. We got Julian Robertson versus Miranda Maverick. And uh, I like Julian Robertson. She's okay. Sometimes she looks really good. Sometimes she looks kind of weak in there. If it doesn't go to the floor, there's not much of a chance for her. And... Uh, Miranda Maverick, she looks good, you know what I mean? I think the UFC is excited about this girl, and uh, she's got a 10-2 and two record to uh, Jillian's 9-5, and five. so Jillian is worse than a, you know, 10-5 and five, uh, fighter, but, um, and I don't like that she's with Dean Thomas, I mean, I don't like that, is this, is there something weird going on there, but um, how could that be a good thing, so I don't know if that's still going on, I could be talking wrong here, but I just think uh, Miranda could win the decision or the TKO uh, victory. Uh, so Miranda. All right, on the next one, we got light heavyweight. We got Modestus Bukaukis uh, versus Mikhail Olazechuk. And uh, whenever you go to the sports betting places, the, the people don't even try to pronounce the UFC names because they're so wild. But um, So I'm sorry if I get some of these a little bit wrong here, okay? But um, Modestus, I remember him, uh, he, he's pretty good, and he looks the part, I think, a little bit more than he actually is. But uh, he's just an average Joe, man. He is not, he's nothing special. And I think uh, Ola Zaychuk, he has the death touch, and he could definitely uh, wipe out Modestus easily in this fight. So I think, and I think the UFC also knows that, but um, his record isn't, I mean, spectacular. It is pretty good, though, but it's not just spectacular. And, um, but I'm going to take, uh, Ola Zaychuk in this one. And I think the UFC is, uh, with me on that one. All right. In the next one, welterweight, we got, uh, Jared Gooden versus, uh, Abu, uh, whatever, Nurmagomedov. And, um, I think this guy is the only Nurmagomedov that doesn't impress me. I, he comes out, he gets gas, he looks sloppy and all that. He, he is okay. And he knows what to do. And uh, I think if this uh, goes to decision and uh, he w works in his wrestling and shit like that and doesn't get too tired or just <clears throat> straight up give up, he could win the decision on this one, especially with uh, the UFC backing him. But um, I think Jared Gooden could actually pop him. And I, I, don't, I don't think that's a bad underdog. For some reason, I picked Jared Gooden against Wonder Boy. And looking back, that is the dumbest thing I've ever done. But uh, not the dumbest, but... Damn, that was pretty stupid. And uh, Jared Gooden sucks, man. He will be out of the UFC. So maybe this they're thinking this is a gimme fight for Nurmurga Madoff, but he's not even that good. So um, I'm going to pick Nurmurga Madoff by decision, but would not be surprised if Gooden knocks him out. And uh, that's kind of a good underdog bet, I think. All right. In the next one, we got a woman's straw weight fight. We got uh, Jessica Penne versus Hannah Goldie. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. And uh, Jessica sucks, you know what I mean? She, uh, she's she got questionable decisions. And uh, the only thing she has is a physical advantage on Hannah. But Hannah's like a full-time, she looks like a personal trainer or something like that. She's always staying fit. She is a mom though, so I don't know. But I think she's gonna win the decision just by being way better everywhere. And uh, that's how it goes. <clears throat> Let me pause this real quick. All right, I'm back. All right, in the next fight, we got a light heavyweight, and these are uh, still the prelims here. We got William Knight versus Alonzo Minifield, and uh, William Knight's a problem. You know, he is powerful. He's got that. He's, he reminds me of a water buffalo. 
and I don't mean that with any disrespect. He just seems so powerful, man, and just like that. And Alonso, he's overrated, and uh, he's got low output, and um, he he uh, he knocked out Paul Craig, I think. That's his, his claim to fame. And other than that, he's not impressive, and a fucking goofball in his topology pitcher doesn't help. Um, I think that William Knight is definitely going to uh, knock him out in this one. And I think the UFC is back in William Knight, so I, I always like that. Uh, Minifield does have a, a little bit of uh, size on him, but that's about it. But William Knight has the uh, more muscle mass, I believe. All right, in the next one, we got Jamie Malarkey versus Kama Worthy. And we always remember uh, uh, Jamie Malarkey for his fight with Brad Riddell. And that instantly makes me think he sucks. I'm always like, this dude looks like somebody got picked on and all this and that. But um, he does have the takedown. I think both of these guys are kind of trash, Kama Worthy included. And uh, Kama Worthy kind of looks like, um, I don't know if it's most deaf or something like that, but he looks like somebody. Um, Kama Worthy does have the better output. And I, uh, I, I mean, I think that he, I don't even think he can knock Jamie Malarkey out. I really don't. So I'm going to go with uh, Jamie Malarkey. And I think he's an underdog in this one as of now. And um, I might sprinkle a little something on there. Um, the next fight, we got uh, Sean O'Malley versus Thomas Almeida. And uh, Sean didn't look very good against um, Cheeto, but other than that, I, I went back and watched his fights, and um, and you know what? He is a good fighter. <clears throat> he's he's able to get out of the way <clears throat> and then uh, strike, and I mean, he does look like he's got that next step, but that I mean, he is a, a PED cheater, and the UFC uh, does back him because he is marketable and shit like that, and I, I enjoy watching him, and... Um, if he was better, I'd probably watch more of his stuff. And uh, Thomas Almeida is, um, what's it called? He's he's pretty decent as a fighter. But uh, now he's looking more and more average. And, um, I mean, where's his head at? Is he really just, like, thinking he's going to try to go for the title? I don't think so. He knows he can't beat those upper upper uh, tier guys. And um, Sean's just going to be the longer dude. And I think he's gonna, just going to outstrike him to a decision on this one. All right, in the next one, we got uh, Tyrone Woodley versus Vicente Luque. And um, this is going to be Tyrone's first three-rounder in a while. Um, he beat Wonderboy back in 17, uh, 2017, that is. And then um, Vicente lost to Wonderboy in 2019, okay? But I think Vicente could definitely outpace Tyrone. Uh, I said that word, but he can definitely outpace Woodley. And... Um, I just think that's going to be it. You know, Woodley doesn't look good, okay? His topology picture is all juiced up. And ever since then, it's just been a slow decline. And he, I mean, he's beaten mentally as well, you know? So I think Vicente Luque uh, by decision, even though Vicente's record doesn't look too great, but neither does Woodley's. So um, Luque. The next fight. All right, you guys. This one's going to cause some controversy and possibly some dislikes. All right. So you might already know who I'm going with here. Um, I love Stipe, okay? I love him. He scored 70 strikes in the first one to Francis's 21. And, um, you know, he worked in the takedowns. I watched it back. He looked great, man. You could have you could have not uh, done it any better against Francis, you know, and that's what got him the win. And that's why he's the champion, man. He he is a special person when it comes to fighting. He's He is a special person when it comes to fighting, at least in my eyes, you know? And um, I think he's going to have the more volume. And I think if it goes to decision, he'll definitely win. Okay. That being said, I'm going to take the shot. I'm going to take the shot on Francis. I think he's done enough. And I think he has the right guy in his corner, literally, to uh, tell him the right things he needs to hear in the moment. And I think he's going to find that uh, Ford Escort uh, punch. And I think he's going to knock our boy out. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that that won't set up a perfect trilogy fight because Stipe can come back and be like, you know, the next time. <clears throat> but um, I think this is Francis's time and this is going to be the passing of the guard here. And I think Francis will get the KO. So that's that. And I hope you guys enjoy the fight and win some money.